Welcome everyone to the Dimitrov Boulet Piano Duo. My name is Dimitri Dimitrov. And my name is Alfie Boulet. And we're very happy that you're watching our new video. Today we're going to talk to you about the Minuet in G Major by Christian Petzold. It's actually a piece included in the book of Anna Magdalena Bach. We thought it would be very interesting to talk about the independence of voices in Baroque pieces, in Baroque music in general, and also in this specific piece. In Baroque music, you have two or more separate voices with each their own musical independence, their own rhythm independence, their own articulation independence. And that means, for example, that the left hand, instead of having just basic chords, which last a whole bar or sometimes even two bars or more, the left hand has a voice and movement of its own. As an example, I will show you what happens if you play the left hand from bar seven on. That was from bar 7 until bar 16, you can see that the left hand has a very long line of its own. And if you look at bar 25, you can see that the left hand again has an independent line. In Baroque music this is very common and presents pianists with much more challenges than actually playing a standard accompanying left hand. That's why every single student of ours says all the time that Bach is the most difficult to play or Baroque music is the most difficult to play because it is so complex. You can imagine how much more focus it takes to focus on a separate voice instead of just focusing on some accompanying chords. And not only does it require more focus, it requires also that you understand the voice. How does the musical phrase go? How is the rhythm? There's much more to explore and much more to understand. And with all this, of course, come the technical challenges. You don't have to only work on your right hand and develop good skills there, but you have to do the same with your left hand, so you have two hands to work on. And so with practicing two different hands, two different voices, you also develop also much better listening skills. And so playing Baroque music is less standard and more challenging of course, but it also provides us with so many more benefits. What makes independent and separate voices even more interesting is articulation. And so now we're going to show you a few examples where we have independent voices plus a very specific articulation and how you can practice in order to achieve good results with those places. I want to go back again to the example of bar 7. First I showed you that the left hand has an independent voice, which is true, but there are two ways you can play the left hand according to the articulation. First, if you don't use articulation, that's one, because many of our students don't actually use any articulation because that's more difficult. So the left hand would sound like this. So as you can hear, I'm playing everything legato, that means no articulation. Legato in a way is articulation, but it's the most basic, that's how you start playing piano. And now I'm going to apply all the articulation that's written in the score from bar 7. Probably you could hear that in some spots I took a little gaps, I took a little breath of air, and that's what the articulation is. I didn't connect everything, I didn't make everything legato. As well as in playing actually staccato as is indicated in bar 10. And you see how much more energy and character and again, independence it gives this voice. It's obvious when you do left hand alone, but it becomes even more interesting when you put hands together later on. Now while left hand is playing something interesting, right hand has also something interesting going on from bar 7. Of course from earlier on, but my example is for bar 7. Right hand goes like this. While left hand also has something interesting going on. Now we're going to put hands together and see what happens in bar number 8. I'm going to start playing from bar 7 so I can make the connection and you can hear the logical connection. Now what I did is I basically played the left hand all legato. But if you look more carefully, in bar 8, the first D, the first quarter, is actually disconnected from the 8 notes. Now listen how that sounds if I apply it. 
instead of. And so we have two options. One is left hand to keep on playing legato, and the other option is for the left hand to disconnect between the D, the first quarter, and the eighth notes. The second option where you disconnect your left hand is much more difficult to do and actually much more beneficial for your technique and development. Not only is it more beneficial, it's simply what is written. And you have to get used to reading a score as it's written. When there is one slur, that means everything under that slur is to be played legato. When there are two slurs, that means they're not connected, so you need to literally disconnect them. How can we exercise actually this? How can we make this articulation easy for us? Well, the first thing to do is to actually play left hand separate. Like I showed you in the very beginning, I showed you hands separate like this, very slowly, and make sure that here you disconnect. And then repeat it a few times. sure that you don't play legato. When you feel comfortable with your left hand separate, let's put our hands together. However, we're going to make a big stop on the first beat of bar 8. I'll show you how. Let's start from bar 7 again. I want you to stop there and really focus on holding your right hand down and very exaggerated lifting your left hand up. You see, when creating independence, you need to understand that your hands at first will want to always do the same thing. If your right hand is pushing down, your left hand will want to push down as well. Or if your left hand is going up, your right hand will want to go up. So we really need to consciously practice this independence. So take the time to consciously realize, hold your right hand down and put your left hand up. Let's do that one more time from bar seven. Don't play anything further, only do that until you're very comfortable and confident with it. And you can of course do this in a much slower tempo because this tempo for a very beginner would be a little bit on the fast side, so you can really do... So you can make sure that the left hand really is disconnecting. When you feel really comfortable and confident in disconnecting the D in bar number 8, I would recommend that you add the four eighth notes afterwards. So we start again in bar 7, and then not immediately, but just add the 4 8 notes. Don't force yourself to keep really a specific rhythm in the very beginning, especially when you add for the first time the 8 notes, if that's difficult, just add them a little bit later. Just wait, and later when you're comfortable you just add the eighth notes. Later on, when you become even more confident, of course, you want to keep a specific rhythm, but in the beginning, be nice to yourself. And now we're going to move on to bar 12, where the right hand has to play staccato while the left hand has to play legato. Right hand and left hand. What we really don't want to do is what many people make the mistake with, is to do everything legato. And what we really do want is, like I mentioned, a right hand staccato and left hand legato. Once more. As I mentioned in our previous example, right and left hand always want to do the same. Until we train it, they're not going to be independent by nature. That means that whenever your left hand is playing legato and your right hand has to play staccato, it's going to be pushing down more because it is influenced with your left hand. And that reminds me of how our students usually would play this spot. They would not only play legato everything, but they would also, like the right hand, especially the thumb, because it has to play this G, the thumb would try to cling on to the keyboard and they would not be able really to release it. Now, of course, it's very important to know what to do and what not to do, but now it's very important to know how we can achieve actually desired results. My favorite exercise for when playing independent staccato and legato is to actually speak out loud what you're doing. That means that we're going to speak out loud exactly what's happening. So we're going to say right hand up, left hand down. Right hand up, left hand down. It's very important that you consciously know that your right hand has to go up while your left hand is staying down. And make sure to do this as slow as it takes for you to be done properly. Make sure that you're not in a hurry. The bad example to do this exercise would be you start saying what Elvira just mentioned, 
right hand staccato, left hand legato, and then you stop speaking even mm. later, later in the part, you just stop pronouncing, you stop saying what you actually have to do. So make sure to be very patient and to do it thoroughly. The next exercise, immediately after the one I already mentioned, would be to do this. I'm going to say what the right hand is going to do, but I'm not going to talk about the left hand anymore. So I do this, right hand up, right hand up, once more, right hand up, right hand up. That means that you have a little bit more independence already and you can just talk about one voice only. All these exercises are really great for developing independence and in this case developing specifically articulation independence. However, very often our students simply don't take the time to do them properly because they are afraid that if they take so much time or if they take the time to speak things out loud that they will not get there. They will not get there at all or they will not get there fast or they will always have to play slow. Our advice is don't worry how you'll get there. Don't worry if you'll get there. Don't worry about the future at all. We promise if you do these exercises properly, if you take the time, it will get you there the fastest. It's perhaps important to know that from our observations, the students that want to take the shortcut usually take the detour. These were our tips for today. If you have any further questions about this piece or any other piece, please feel free to contact us. If you enjoyed our video, give us a like and also subscribe to our channel. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And if you want to check out our complete courses, you can visit Skillshare and Udemy. We're there. For us, making this video was a pleasure. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next Sunday.